Hey and welcome to another episode of Cinema 4D Fundamentals. Today we want to close the subject of modeling, but we want to have a final look on some exercise actually. And we want to model a nut with the polygon modeling techniques I have explained. And also of course, we want to mix in some subdivision surface modeling. So this is the object we will end up with, a nice nut and a few particular interesting things about that. So the one thing we have of course is this helix thread in the inside. And then also what we have is we have this curves here on the outside side but still um, some edges right here on that side. And what also is of course quite interesting in a model such as this is that we have a circle, nice clean circular inside uh, on our nut, but we have like a more hard edged six sided um, well shape on the outside. So there are a few tricks and things you have to keep in mind when you build something like this and we'll go from start to finish and hopefully hopefully you will learn a few things by that. Okay, let's go ahead and let's try to build the nut the polygon way. The first thing we want to do is we want to think about what would be the best parametric object to start off with. So let's open the menu and the best thing we can start off with is actually the tube. The tube has already kind of the inner circle and an outer circle and so we want to to use that to start building our nut. Okay, the first thing I want to adjust on the parametric object is the number of segments on this object. We have now 36 segments and we want to decrease them down to the number of six so that we get a six sided nut. Now the inner part is a little bit small for our soon to be uh, nut so I increase that to the number of 100 centimeters. A good thing in modeling is that you turn on the grout shading lines over here in the display settings of your editor view and that way you can see the segments or the polygons of your object. Now you see we face a little problem here which is that the inner part of our tube is still six sided and if I would increase the rotation segments of my tube the outer part would be more rounded as well but we want to keep the rough outer edges here of our tube and only add more detail a, a nicer circle to the inner part here of our tube. And to do that, I want to introduce another object to the scene and this time a cylinder, which will give us the nice, smooth, round shape we want to have. Now, the first thing I can turn off on the cylinder here is actually the caps. We don't need them because we, of course, want to have a hole later on in our cylinder. Uh, in our in our nut, sorry. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to set the radius of my cylinder to the same as the inner radius of my tube. So this is a hundred centimeters. So I go to the cylinder and hit the object tag and type in one hundred for the radius. And there we go. Now we can see that the size of my cylinder is the same size as the one of my tube. So later on we want to use the subdivision surface object to make everything nice and smooth and one thing to keep in mind when when doing so is that we want to keep the amount of polygons we are working with and the polygon object as low as possible. So we want to use as less polygons as possible to keep a nice clean and controllable structure of our polygons and then the subdivision surface object will do the work for us and add in automatically uh, by an algorithm 
all the other subdivisions and polygons to make a nice smooth surface. Now we have 36 segments right here in our cylinder and this seems to be um, a lot of more than we would actually need. So I want to decrease that a little bit. And now we have to watch out for one thing, which is that we want to keep the the polygons or the, the cuts, edges, whatever you like to call it, of our cylinder aligned with the one of our tube. Let me switch to the top view to illustrate that a little bit um, more clearly. Now if I decrease the amount of the segments of the cylinder, you see that, for example, if I would type in 11, that the segments are not aligned at all. Now to make it a little bit more clearly, we can turn on the caps for a sec, that we can see the, the, the subdivisions or the segments a little bit better here on the top. And for example, if I would choose 10 also, that will only line up here once one edge in the middle. So I have to choose a number of segments, which is actually dividable by the same number which we have typed in here, so the number 6. If I go back to the default, which is 36, you see 36 is divided by 6, and you see the edges line up here quite good. Now, of course, the tube lacks of the edges uh, on in these areas right here, so there are, are no connected edges here. This is fine for now. We will add them later on. But we left now to find a number of segments which is um, fitting so that we have lined up edges but which is also low enough so that we don't have to control so many polygons later on. A good way to do that is for example to divide that by 2 and that way we get 18 and this is okay. We have two subdivisions here uh, in between each segment and the edges are still aligned perfectly. So I go back to the perspective view and don't forget to turn off the caps again because we don't need them anymore. Okay, at this point we are finished actually with the parametric settings of our objects. We set it in a way that those two objects align with each other that the radius of the cylinder is the same as of the inner part of our tube. And now we are ready to go to make those two objects editable. And by that turn them into real polygon objects. We can do so by either hitting the button over here or just hit the C key on your keyboard. And there we go. Those two are now polygon objects. And we can go to those polygon modes right here on the left side and start editing our objects. One thing I want to get rid of first though is the inner part of the tube. I hide the cylinder for now and you see that this inner part of the tube here we don't actually need because later on our cylinder will be defining the, the inner part. So I go Ahead, use in the loop selection by hitting UL or go to the select menu, hit loop selection, select the inner part, delete it, and then the inner part is gone. Now, after you have turned your parametric objects into polygon objects, there is often one thing you have to keep in mind. Let me show you by lifting that surface, and you can see that those objects or those polygons are not connected at this point right here. And that's actually true for the whole surface here. If I lift that off, you see that is, this is uh, not connected. And to connect that, you can just deselect everything, make right click and optimize, and then Cinema 4D will automatically connect those surfaces together. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I want to actually connect the cylinder with my tube. 
And what we want to do is we want to select the upper part of our tube. Let me show you quickly. So we want to actually merge this selection together with the outer cylinder part of the top here. And on the other, on the bottom of our tube, it's uh, actually the other way around. Here we want to select and merge together the lower part of our cylinder with the bottom part of our tube. To do that, there are two things we have to do first. The one thing is that we first have to add a little bit more details to our tube so that we have exactly the same amount of edges um, on our tube that it is exactly as the same as on our cylinder. And to do that I select the outer edges of my tube. Make sure to select every outer edge uh, to make the cuts fit perfectly later on. And then I go to the right click menu and use Edge Cut. And in the Edge Cut you can just click and hold your mouse, move it to the right and then you'll see we will add a lot of edges. Now we only need two edges right now to perfectly match the number of edges from our cylinder to the one of our tube. And then we have to make sure that we deselect the Create Angons checkbox right here in the Attributes Manager because right now Cinema 4D is only creating those Angons for us. This means there is no real cut, no real edge into that polygon surface here. So if I deselect that you see the lines turn from green to blue and there we go. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually merge those two objects together. And to do that we could either use the right click connect objects and delete or we use the connect object right here from this menu, put our two objects in it and then again make it editable by using either the, the button over here or C on your keyboard. And now you see our two objects are gone. Maybe before you do that, make sure to make a copy or save your file. You can use, for example, the save incremental uh, function from Cinema 4D because as you can see, if I hit C right now, my other objects are gone. Maybe I did something wrong and I want to come back later on to, to fix that problem and there would be no way back. I used the save incremental function so I can back, come back to that file later on and I'll be on the safe side. Okay so now the next step we want to do is we want to actually merge those two uh, objects together and we can do that by using the stitch and sew tool. So I select the two edges I want to merge together and then do right click stitch and sew select one point and move my mouse to the up, upper part of the cylinder and there we go. Now sometimes you may run into a problem by doing that for example let me find find the weak spot right here of course, ah here we go, there it is. So sometimes when you just pick randomly one point and select it with another you might end up with a strange geometry. So what I tend to use is I like to stitch and sew the points together which are already aligned to each other. And then this should work out. Okay now to the lower part. As I said earlier we want to actually merge this part together with the uh, bottom part of our of our tube. However, if we do so, um, I can show you that there is a little problem. Uh, let's say I stitch and sew those together. What you see is that we now get the shape of our uh, six-sided uh, tube right here on the bottom. And actually, we don't want that. We want to keep the nice rounded shape of our cylinder. 
So what you have to do is you have to stitch and sew from the top to the bottom and then we have to move back the kind of lower part to line up with the height or the Y position of our bottom part of, um, of our shape right here. So to do that um, we can just for example set the Y to 0 uh, not to 0 sorry to 50 and this should line up perfectly then. There we go. We can check also in the front view and yeah, seems perfect. Okay, it's a good time to optimize again just to make sure that everything is nice and clean. And then it's time to put our connect object here, our, our nut, we can rename that by the way, and to put that into the subdivision surface object. When you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and click on the subdivision surface object right here, the nut will automatically be a child of the subdivision surface object. And you can see already that we now have a nice, smooth, clean, rounded shape. One thing you can do in the subdivision surface object is to increase the number of subdivision editor subdivisions. For example, put in the number three and you see that now the object is subdivided a little bit more. Now the setting for the subdivision renderer comes only into account if you hit the pic render to picture viewer. When you render in your uh, editor view then it will use the subdivisions you typed in here. We only have a quite simple object here so a subdivision uh, number three for the editor is fine and it should not lead to any calculation problems on the GPU. Okay, what we want to do now, we want to slowly define the edges of our nut here a little bit more. And to do that, I hit Q on my keyboard to turn off the subdivision surface for now. So you can switch back and forth for your subdivision surface um, by hitting Q. When working, I tend to use the uh, keep to turn off the subdivision surface so that I can have a clear, more clearly view on my polygons. Okay, so we go back to our nut and we want to in introduce a few control cuts. Maybe before we do so, let me do one thing actually. I want to lower the the height of those outer edged points a little bit so that we get the typical shape of a nut. So I lower that maybe by about 30 centimeters or maybe around 35. It doesn't have to be that accurate and I also want to lower a little bit my upper part here of the inner circle just like that for example. Okay, there we go. And now I want to introduce a few defining edge cuts around our edges here to make the our nut not that smooth but a little bit more like hard edged. I go to the line mode again with the loop selection tool enabled. I select a few of my outer edges. Actually, I, I select every outer edge I have right here. And then I use the bevel tool to set um, a nice clean cut around every of those edges. Now, if you have the bevel tool selected and you have a look here over at the bevel mode, by default it is on chamfer. What chamfer means is that you kind of um, will chamfer your corners a little bit by a given radius. But we actually don't want to chamfer our edges, but we want to introduce uh, two new cuts on each side. So we go to the solid mode of, of our bevel tool. And then if you click and hold your mouse, you see that we get actually like two copies of our existing edge and we can move this 
um, more to the inside or more to the outside. I just start off here by maybe an offset of about, let's say, eight centimeters. Again, we don't want to be too accurate right now. I turn on the subdivision surface again, hit the render view, and you see we start to get a nice shape. Okay, now I want to add another typical detail of a nut, which is kind of a leveled off plateau right here on the top. And to do so, I just go back to the polygon mode, turn off the subdivision surface for now. And then I loop select the selection or the, the cut I have right here. And I actually want to move it to the top. And you can switch to the front view, for example, zoom in a little and then align it more or less to the height of your inner circle. And you can use the scale tool to level off the polygons a little bit like that, move it up a little bit more. And now it's kind of perfectly aligned to the height of the inner cycle. There we go. And now I use the scale tool again, grab it here on the green uh, triangle to scale it in the Z and the X direction a little bit, like that. And then if you hit Q again, you see it kind of is still pretty rounded right here. So again, we use the trick with the bevel tool, make sure it's in solid mode to add a bevel right here. You can choose um, maybe a little smaller radius here, about five, four centimeters. And there we go. We have a nice plateau right here now. And what I want to do is I want to add another cut right here because the, the corner is now a little bit too rounded here because I moved the one edge to the outside. And I just do that with a knife tool in loop mode now manually. And about here. And there we go. Now we should have a nice clean edge again. There we go. Okay, now let's say we want to actually have a little bit more of a defined edge right here on the outer corners of our nut. Now this gets a little bit more complicated now. Um, we could have done so in an earlier step by defining um, like a loop cut around those edges right here. Um, but let's say we are, at, we are at this point in the process and we want, don't want to go back and we want to add this little bit more pronounced edge right now. So the first thing we want to do, we want to add something like a control cut. We want, don't want to uh, influence the geometry beyond those this point. So if I add this cut right here, I actually define like a border and I don't want any of the geometry be influenced um, on the top here. So beyond this this point here. And the same thing we want to do here on the bottom around here. So the it should be uh, more or less in the middle um, of your polygons. Okay, there we go. Now what we want to do basically, just skip ahead here a little bit, and what we want to do is we want to add details to this kind of corner. And again, we could use the bevel tool with this, and then we have something like this. Okay, so now to do that, we have to actually select all the edges and there's a little bit of um, work here to do because there is already quite a bit of detail in it. So that's what I meant in the, uh, in the other two episodes that you want to make sure that you keep as less details as possible for the longest time. Otherwise you will end up and selecting a lot of polygons like we do now. But sometimes you don't come around. Yeah, you don't get around doing this. So here's the last one. 
zoom a little closer. There we go. Just a quick check if we have everything selected. Okay, now back to the um, bevel tool. Make sure again to be in solid mode. And now I uh, move this a little bit to the outside, let's say about 15 centimeters. Okay, now you can see, well, let's turn on the um, subdivision surface again. Let's see, and you can see we have a little bit more defined um, edges. That's nice. Now, one problem we have though is that we kind of have those triangles in here and this angons also. And to get rid of those, the first thing we can do is we can loop select in the surface mode this particular area, also on the bottom. And then we say right click, remove angons. This firstly will make the cuts for us and then we can go ahead and actually get rid of those triangles. Now two triangles together is one four-sided polygon and also four triangles merged together are one four-sided polygon. So I select all the problematic areas right here. Select those and then those on the bottom. Actually, on the bottom, they are not that problematic. This is a, um, a flat surface, so triangles won't matter. Maybe here it can be a little bit more of a problem. So we want just want to make sure to get rid of them. And then I do the right click and say dissolve. And now we have a quad, a four-sided polygon. One, two, three, four. Hit Q again. Let's see how that looks. Seems fine. Now maybe we find that edge to be a little bit too pronounced. So we can go to our polygon object, do a loop select of that particular edge. And, oops, sorry. And then we can again use the slide, for example, to just move that a little bit to the top. Hit Q again. And there we go, now it's a little bit more smoothen out. Okay, the only thing missing now for our nut is actually the inner thread um, right here in the inside. So let's go ahead and add that. And actually I've learned a method from Shane Benson. Make sure to check out his tutorials if you want to dive deep, deeper into sub modeling. And it's actually quite an easy way to add a thread um, to your objects whenever you want to do that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to loop no, ring select all those polygons here in the inside and then we want to add a lot of subdivisions to that. So we do again go to the edge cut and then click and just move that mouse way up to maybe let's say about 12 subdivisions. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, actually what you want to keep in mind, we don't want to touch this line and that line. We just want to work with all the things in between. So we start off here and then we always go four steps um, to the top and select another line. So we start off here, first line, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The, fir the top line now is uh, the one we don't want to touch, so we keep um, keep it selected like that. And now we want to move that a little bit in the X direction, let's say about five centimeters in the X direction. Actually, I think this is a little bit too less. Let's say we go with seven, so plus seven. There we go. Then we want to select the line um, top of the previously selected lines. So we go one and then one, two, three, four. Oh, no, not that one. 
that one. And then one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four. And that's again um, on the top. So now we want to go seven in the Z direction. And then the next line is this one, then one, two, three, four. Have I counted right? One, two, three, four. Yes, I have. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, that's not enough. And then we type here minus x7. There we go. And now the last line. This one we want to select, then one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. There we go. And now we go minus seven in the Z direction. Turn on the subdivision again. And there you go. You have this nice helix thread in the inside of your object. Okay, this is it. This was uh, kind of like a practice session for getting a little bit more into polygon modeling and sub-D modeling. Hope you like it, liked it. Make sure to follow my channel if you want to see more tutorials. And see you next time. Goodbye.